Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming today. I'm Brandon Beach. Um, thanks for coming to this information session. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues of the board, I welcome each of you to the Northwest Corridor Project Industry Information Meeting. Today's meeting is truly a celebration of new milestones for this much needed transportation project. We're moving forward with the procurement for a private partner and we're moving forward in a better way for the citizens of the state of Georgia. The, the board and Georgia DOT are grateful for the insight and leadership that Governor Nathan Deal has provided regarding this project and this procurement process. His interest and his involvement is a clear indicator of how significant the Northwest Corridor project is to improving mobility and economic development in the metro Atlanta and throughout the state. Please know that this is no small potato project for Georgia. In addition to the infrastructure improvements, we're all eager to reap the job creation, mobility, productivity, and air quality benefits that are anticipated in this project. Uh, Mr. Rudy Bowen was supposed to be here today, our chairman. He's undergoing a root canal surgery, so uh, think about him now. But uh, as chair of the P3 Alternative Financing Committee, we provide leadership to Georgia DOT as we enter the world of public-private partnership. At their best, P3 projects successfully bring together the strengths of the public and private sectors to address, address much needed but expensive infrastructure needs in a cost-effective way. In the last three years, there's been a 50% increase in the number of states that have enacted legislative frameworks that allow and encourage P3 projects, according to the National Conference of State Legislators. Georgia is proud to be in the forefront of states that are using the P3s to maximize our available resources and partnerships for the public good. The Northwest Corridor, Corridor Project is moving forward. The procurement process of this project, which will now be known as the Northwest Corridor Express, is moving forward. We have issued the notice of intent. Our meeting with you today will be, is an information meeting, and then we will be issuing an RFQ next week. The goals of the Northwest Corridor Express have remained the same, to improve mobility, to offer options and a reliable trip time for our commuters, and to provide jobs and economic benefits for the region. The delivery method of the project has changed. This process is a more streamlined procurement built on lessons learned, with fewer, fewer risks to the private entities and greater management of the entire project for the state of Georgia. On behalf of my fellow committee members, many of who are here today, I also want to thank Governor Deal for his vision and leadership and acknowledge the hard work of the employees, teams at Georgia DOT, State Road and Tollway Authority, the Georgia State Finance and Investment Commission, that have made and will continue to make the Northwest Corridor project a reality for Metro Atlanta, the state and the nation's southeast region. Please know from our perspective here at GDOT, we are excited as you are about continuing the procurement process for this project. We thank you for, in advance for the expertise and innovative techniques you will bring to the table. I do want to thank you for the, your attendance today and want to thank you for your partnership and support. We are really excited about this project. So you'll learn more about the project today, and then again, we will have um, an RFQ going out next week, and we plan on having the environmental document and moving forward quickly. Uh, the governor, I want to reiterate, the governor is committed to this project. Uh, I know we had somewhat of a, a bump in the road by stopping this project last time, but I want to tell you, Governor Deal is committed to this. He uh, got on a plane and went and met with Secretary LaHood to make sure we kept the TIFIA. And uh, he was able to get $300 million in prior, prior motor fuel dollars last year in the budget. So there is a financial commitment on the state's part for this project. So I want you to feel comfortable moving forward with this. Thank you. And I will now like to introduce Toby Carr. Toby. Thank you very much, Mr. Beach. I'm Toby Carr, Planning Director for GDOT, and uh, in January, the Governor took the opportunity in his State of the State Address to express his commitment to the I-75-575 corridor. It's a corridor that's a key economic engine for the state. It's a vital corridor for commuter traffic in Metro Atlanta, as well as freight flows throughout the southeastern United States. 
congestion relief in the corridor is necessary. The governor's office, GDOT, CERTA, GISFIC, and several other transportation partners since then have worked diligently and cooperatively to create a better way forward on the Northwest Corridor, resulting in the selection of the DBF P3 delivery method. The design build finance method maintains key benefits of the P3 while addressing sovereignty and flexibility issues that put Georgia taxpayers and commuters in a better position moving into the future. This delivery method is fully supported by the governor and moving this project forward moves us a step closer to much needed new capacity and congestion reduction along the corridor. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your interest in this project. Thanks again to all of our partners, public and private, for the hard work and the great cooperation that got us to this point. And thank you in advance to all of our public and private partners for the work and cooperation that will move us forward from today to the delivery of the new lanes in the Northwest Corridor. Thanks again, and I'll now turn it over to Daryl Van Meter. Good morning. My name is Daryl Van Meter, and I am GDOT's um, State Innovative Program Delivery Engineer. <clears throat> My role in this project is to provide technical oversight and to provide overall project management. Before we get into the details of this project, uh, I would like to discuss the context of it uh, briefly. The project represents truly a major step forward in advancing the department's managed lane system plan. Urban area traffic congestion represents a, a challenge to the continued growth and economic prosperity of the Atlanta region. For this region, GDOT has developed the managed lane system plan for the metro Atlanta area, the first comprehensive system-wide evaluation of urban area managed lanes performed in the United States. The plan provides tiered implementation recommendations that utilize and expand upon the existing HOV system footprint as shown in this graphic. To date, significant progress has been made implementing the managed lane system in our region, including one existing project, the I-85 HOV conversion project, and several currently under various stages of study, including the I-85 hot lanes extension, the 75 South Express project, Georgia 400, uh, and Northwest Corridor, not to mention the 285 top end. Uh, as, as, tier, as tier one recommendations, the Northwest Corridor is a vital component to, to this system and its, its completion will play a key role in moving managed lanes forward in the Atlanta region. Now I wanna provide just a, a, a few details regarding the actual project scope. The managed lanes project will consist of approximately 30 miles of managed lanes along I-75 and 575. The lines shown in yellow, uh, which extend from 285 to the, the 575 split, will be two lanes reversible, barrier separated lanes, while the red lines that you see uh, will, ex will be one reversible barrier separated line, uh, barrier separated lane. The lanes will operate in the peak direction in, uh, in, in the morning they will run southbound and in the evening they'll run northbound. As described here, I'll take this opportunity to point out that the, the I-285, I-20 West Corridor included in the previous procurement will not be included in this project's procurement. The project will include six interchanges for the managed lanes facility along 75 and the locations you'll see in the animation in just a minute. The project will also offer three slip ramps along 575, which will allow motorists to access the general purpose lanes, but no direct interchanges will be provided on this segment on 575. One of the main purposes of this project is to provide an option for reliable trip time. It is estimated that the project will provide a travel time savings of approximately 45 minutes for those using the total length of the project. While this is for those traveling in the managed lanes, 
The project also provides travel time benefits for those traveling in the general purpose lanes. Please refer to the final EIS for the complete disclosure of the benefits and impacts of the project. The following video will provide a video representation and a little bit more of the look and feel of the project. Welcome to the Northwest Corridor Project. Georgia's Northwest Corridor has a large growing population and it is home to some of the region's most important employment and activity centers. It is also one of the Atlanta region's most congested travel corridors. Unless improvements are made soon, congestion is likely to increase with a further loss in mobility for corridor residents and employees. The Northwest Corridor Project will address significant transportation issues in this important area. It will provide additional transportation choices, improve mobility between activity centers, and improve travel time reliability, while avoiding or minimizing adverse environmental impacts. Two managed lanes are proposed on I-75 between I-285 and I-575. One managed lane is proposed on both I-75 and I-575 north to Hickory Grove Road and Sixes Road in Cherokee County, respectively. This will result in increased use of van pools and transit buses within the Northwest Corridor, which will reduce both travel time and vehicle emissions. Managed lanes will allow eligible vehicles to use the lanes efficiently while providing revenue for system operations. While this type of system is new to Georgia, similar managed lane systems are currently in use in Houston, Los Angeles, Minneapolis, and Seattle. The managed lanes and ramps will operate in the southbound direction in the morning peak period and in the northbound direction for the remainder of the day. The managed lanes and ramps will be closed for a period during the day and at night during non-peak commuting times for lane clearing, establishing the reverse operation direction and maintenance. Access points to managed lanes will be available on I-75 at I-285, Terrell Mill Road, Roswell Road, I-575, Big Shanty Road, and Hickory Grove Road. Slip ramps on I-575 provide access between managed lanes and general purpose lanes. Three southbound slip ramps and three northbound slip ramps will be available. The south end of the new I-75 managed lanes project intersects with I-285. Northbound vehicles on I-75 in the evening commute will enter the managed lane system via a flyover ramp located in the median of I-75 south of Windy Hill Road. Vehicles on I-285 will have access to the managed lane system from east and west of I-75. In the future, travelers in the managed lanes may have the opportunity to continue east or west on I-285 in a managed lane system without entering the general purpose lanes. Windy Hill Road, slightly north of the I-285 interchange, is the first exit and entrance to the general purpose lanes on I-75. An elevated section of the managed lanes carries traffic over Windy Hill Road, leaving I-75 and Windy Hill Road traffic uninterrupted. Access to and from Roswell Road will adjust with managed lane traffic flow for maximum efficiency during peak commute times. In the morning, traffic can enter the managed lanes to join traffic moving south or exit from the southbound managed lanes to access Roswell Road. In the evening, traffic can enter the managed lanes to join traffic moving north or exit the northbound managed lanes to access Roswell Road. The same ramp that provides entry in the morning provides exit in the evening. At the I-75, I-575 interchange on the north end of the managed lanes, Northbound evening commuters in the managed lanes can continue north on either I-75 or I-575 without interruption. Similarly, southbound morning commuters in the managed lanes on I-575 can merge into the I-75 managed lanes. The new lanes continue to the south in the median of I-75 for a short distance before flying over to the west side of the I-75 right-of-way. Access to and from the managed lane system on I-575 is accomplished using slip ramps which allow commuters to transition into and out of the managed lane system at freeway speeds. 
The southbound slip ramps will allow entry into the managed lane system from the general purpose lanes in the morning, while the northbound slip ramps will allow exit from the managed lane system in the evening and the use of existing general purpose interchanges for intermediate destinations. Disruption to the existing traffic on I-75 and I-575 will be minimal since the majority of the work will be either on the west side of I-75 or in the median north of the I-75-I-575 interchange. It is expected that area residents, businesses and commuters will be enjoying the many benefits of this project starting in just three to four years. For more information on this project, please visit www.nwcproject.com. <clears throat> that may seem like a, a rerun to some of you who are familiar with the project, but uh, that's okay. The project is consistent with our final EIS, so no change is expected regarding that line. This project is a full oversight federal aid major project. Uh, we have worked out with Federal Highway uh, Administration uh, a process and approach to complete the NEPA process. GDOT is currently uh, preparing the record of decision with Federal Highway and it is anticipated to secure the record of decision by January of, of next year. Additional public involvement is planned this summer to keep the public informed of the process. GDOT has also proposed a TIP amendment, which includes revisions to the financial plan to support the new design-build finance delivery. Right-of-way impacts include 14 full takes and 65 partial takes, no change again from what is in the final EIS. While the NEPA process has not yet uh, reached its conclusion, the scope of the project is consistent with the preferred alternative contained in the final EIS. The department is very interested in taking advantage of opportunities for workforce development and as such has instituted an, uh, a goal of 14% on the overall total project. And we envision that this would extend to construction and non-construction type activities. Uh, GDOT has worked with USDOT and to identify some best practices in regarding encouraging DBE participation uh, on major projects and furthermore, we hope to host a DBE workshop for proposers in the fall. Engagement with the DBE community will be ongoing throughout the process. And now with that, Chip Meeks, our P3 administrator, will talk about the procurement. Good morning. Thank you, Daryl. My name is Chip Meeks. I am the public-private partnership uh, administrator, P3 administrator. And one thing I've noticed so far this morning is that um, when Mr. Beach and Mr. Carr were up here speaking, this television camera was on them the entire time. When Daryl came up here, it immediately swung around <laughs> to the um, monitor there. So I'm just going to keep an eye on him and see if he keeps it up here. So, so Daryl, I don't know what that says about me and you, but, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about the procurement. I want to talk about the roles and responsibilities during the procurement and talk a little bit about uh, the schedule. The delivery method, you've heard it mentioned several times that this is a DBF. This is still a public-private partnership utilizing the design, build, finance delivery method. Now, this method has been utilized uh, probably over a dozen projects uh, in several states in Florida and Texas, New Jersey, Michigan, uh, North Carolina. So it's a proven method that it allows the state to transfer the design and the build uh, portion of this and part of the financing we'll talk about that to the private sector while retaining the tolling and maintenance and operations uh, responsibilities after the facility is open for um, open to traffic. Uh, we anticipate that the design and construction time is approximately four and a half years uh, about 53 months for it to be open to traffic as I mentioned, the private financing is expected to be approximately 10 to 20 percent. This is a gap financing uh, that uh, will be about 10 to 20 percent of the estimated design build cost of the project. We anticipate monthly construction payments, and those will be based on the progress during the design and build phases. 
and it will be up to a maximum of an annual allowable or um, funds available. Now repayment to the developer for the private financing uh, begins upon final completion or final acceptance and final repayment to the developer is anticipated to take one to two years from that final acceptance. The department is going to allow the and actually endorses and encourages the uh, alternate technical concept process. Uh, this will in, um, this will take place after the um, RFP and the, or excuse me after the shortlist takes place in the draft RFP period. But these ATCs will be strictly confidential. Uh, I mentioned shortlisting. Our P3 rules, I believe, allow us to shortlist not less than two, no more than five but we anticipate that we will shortlist to three or four proposers. There will be a payment for work product included in the cancellation terms. Uh, this is very, that's a term we use in Georgia, uh, very similar to what most of you know as a stipend. Uh, that is going to be offered, which will demonstrate uh, the state's commitment to move forward with this project. Now this will be a best value procurement. It'll be based on a combination of the price and evaluation criteria that is set up in the RFP. And there'll be more details in the RFP. So that I'll talk a little bit about the responsibilities of the developer and uh, of the state. First of all, the developer will be responsible for the design, the construction, and the gap financing that I mentioned earlier. Our treasurer will come up and speak to you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Uh, the developer will be responsible for utility relocations required to complete the project, while GDOT will be responsible for the MOUs for the utilities. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, ATCs, the developer will be responsible for those, and um, they will be responsible if an ATC is incorporated into a developer's proposer, proposal, the developer will be responsible for all impacts associated with the ATCs, such as necessary NEPA reevaluation additional costs and additional right-of-way. The developer will be responsible for uh, obtaining all project permits except the env uh, environmental permits and that will be more detailed in the RFP as well. There will be post-construction warranties that will be um, provided by the developer and some of those details are still being finalized so you'll see some more detail on that uh, to come. Now G GDOT and SRTA, uh, the state will have responsibilities. Uh, number one is right-of-way. GDOT will um, be responsible for obtaining the required right-of-way for the Northwest Corridor Express as provided in the environmental document. SRTA will be responsible for tolling collections, uh, back office, customer service um, operations after um, the project is open to traffic. Uh, GDOT will be responsible for the post-construction operation and maintenance of the facility. And GDOT will also be responsible for the majority of the financing. Now this slide is a busy slide, so if you can take a look at it, I'll just highlight some of the things. What this shows is that uh, GDOT and SRTA are in a partnership uh, and are committed to bring this project to pass. Um, there will be an intergovernment ag agreement between the two agencies, as you see in the middle block there. Uh, it will establish GDOT's roles and SRTA's roles during the design build phase. As you see, there's also a ground lease uh, that will be um, to SRTA, which will allow SRTA to perform its responsibilities for tolling. GDOT will be responsible for the project financing and the day to day management of the project. SRTA will be responsible for issuing types, uh, various types of bonds with financial backstop from GDOT. Both agencies, as I mentioned, are just committed to working through this project. Uh, there will be a design-build finance agreement, which will be established, and it will uh, establish the roles and responsibility of the developer for this project as well. This may be a little bit easier to look at. It's a simplified slide of that. It shows the public partner, which is the state, which is GDOT and SRTA. It shows the private partner, which is the developer. As I mentioned, that SRTA up in their block will enter into various agreements, uh, an IGA, which is an inter intergovernment agreement, and a ground lease. And there'll be a design-build finance agreement with the developer, 
whereby GDOT acts as the manager of the project. SRTA will assist in securing toll revenue bonds and the TIFIA loan. Uh, these are the proceeds for the project and many more details of the responsibilities of, S of SRTA and GDOT uh, will be provided during the RFP phase. This is the schedule. This is a high level uh, overview. Uh, we do anticipate issuing the RFQ um, probably towards the end of this week, not the very first of next week, but we, we have the date scheduled for June the uh, 8th. We intend to, uh, excuse me, the SOQs will be due back mid-July. We intend to announce the short list August 16th. From August to December, we'll be refining the RFP. We call this a draft RFP period where we take input from the industry based on uh, the RFP that we've, we've submitted and we work with the shortlist, shortlisted teams. We'll be receiving approval from FHWA. And uh, we anticipate issuing the RFP in December. And that's when our ATC process will begin. As Daryl mentioned, the rod is anticipated to be uh, January of 2013. The proposals will be due back in June of that year, the selection in July. We anticipate the notice of proceed to be in November. And we also anticipate the project being open to traffic May of 2018. Now we'll look at some of the pro project financials. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Angela Whitworth, our treasurer, to come up and explain some of those things. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm here to, this morning to present to you the projected um, funding structure for the project. As Mr. Beach had previously commented earlier on, that the legislature has set aside $300 million in prior year motor fuel funds in House Bill 741 in this past legislative cycle to be designated for this project. Also, in the statewide transportation improvement plan, over seven years, we have set aside in federal and state match $236 million to also potentially go toward this project. Um, the department has applied for TIFIA and has been approved to move forward with up to $270 million in a TIFIA loan. And then finally, as Chip had commented earlier about the gap, um, there's the potential of up to $160 million gap for the project. Um, the developer's contribution would commence upon the project's notice to proceed. The repayment of the de developer's contribution would commence at final acceptance of the project. And then finally, the developer's contribution will vary depending over, um, depending overall, the overall financial structure that's spelled out in the project agreement that will come later on when the proposals, um, when the request for the proposals have been approved. Um, this right here is potentially the overall financial structure at this time. Uh, good morning. My name is Chris Tomlinson. I'm the Deputy Executive Director for the State Road and Tollway Authority. And I just wanted to um, take this time uh, to say uh, both thank you to uh, GDOT and the board. We're very excited about working with GDOT on this project. I think this is a great turnout and uh, this bodes very well for the uh, future of this project and, and helping to alleviate congestion in Metro Atlanta. Um, as a transportation uh, financing and uh, tolling operations entity for the state of Georgia, uh, SRTA is excited to work with GDOT on the uh, continued development and rollout of the state managed lane system plan. And the Northwest Corridor project is, is just the next and, and one of the key steps in the implementation of this managed lane system plan. Providing additional options, additional capacity, and more reliable trip time is a, a, for Georgia motorists is a goal that uh, we share with um, GDOT and, of course, uh, the governor. And we're just um, looking forward to the role that we can play to help bring uh, this uh, project uh, to light uh, with, uh, with GDOT. So thank you very much. Uh, we're looking forward to working with the developer community and, and we look forward to providing whatever assistance GDOT needs to uh, make this project a reality. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Golden. Well, thank you, Dave, for the opportunity this afternoon to greet, meet with you guys. Uh, thank you for your attendance today. It's, it is a very good turnout. Um, I guess I hope today's presentations are, were beneficial to you uh, as you can see that we are moving forward with this particular project. 
uh, moving this procurement forward is a priority for our agencies. And most of the key players are in the agencies are here today. I want to make sure you know that the Georgia State Finance Commission is also a part of this particular team. So really wrapping this up today, I guess where do we go forward from here? That's, that's the main thing we want to know. And I want you to know that we have an aggressive schedule. Gerald has worked with, with the team to ensure that taking advantage of every opportunity to expedite this schedule. There will be a strong and complete financial plan, as you will see, that will be presented to you. We are committed and we will focus on workforce development and creating jobs for Georgians. That's a very important emphasis area for us. And we will work with you and our partners to deliver the project on time and on budget. That is the, the most important thing for the success of this particular project. So today we're going to wrap this up. We're going to have the RFQs will be going out June the 5th. And the department, I think, and the governor are committed to delivering this project. So thank you.